I didn't like it. Nothing about the dame's story was coming together, and everything stank all the way to high heaven. Nothing was adding up except for the pile of bills on my desk. And when she flashed around that kind of coin, well, of course I took the job. And this case was already shaping up to be pretty dicey. So like a halfling in a public bath, I was going to have to keep on my toes. Hello there everyone, welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, who has given up on doing this whole character bit of Frankelford Drebenwolf. I just wanted to do a reference to the Naked Gun series, to Police Squad, and also just really just kind of honor the comedic genius and wit of Leslie Nielsen, but I just don't quite have that same dry delivery, that same tone. I mean, Frankelford Drevenwolf sounds like an excellent character that I'd probably want to play as part of Startling Developments, P.I. Agency for Hire, but it's just not in the cards for me, man, and I just don't think I can really do that in any sort of a timely fashion and still get these videos out and ready for you all. So we are just going to start diving on into what we have on offer for you today for the Pathfinder Investigator, specifically first edition. We Today we are going to be going over their skills, but there are also a couple of things that need to get addressed real quick. But before we get into all of that, if you're new here to the channel, then go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. Now, as far as things that do need to get addressed here really quick, first off is there was an error that had slipped through. I knew about it. I was going to fix it. It was a miscalculation that I had caught over the process of editing. It's in reference to the number of points left over for uh, uh, allocating to your stat array. And I had mentioned that, you know, you're left over with one extra point. That was when I had dropped Charisma down to eight. But that one point doesn't really let us do a whole lot. Because to bump Constitution up to a 14, we need two points. And to get up to 14 to get those two, and get those two points, we need to either tank Charisma down to a seven, which is where the whole, it gets a little bit too dicey and dangerous to start tanking your dump stats too low. And also... You know, it's just kind of hard to play around any further with the kind of build that we're going for because, as you'll see, the investigator can be a little bit mad, multiple ability dependent, which is something definitely that is worth keeping your eyes open for, especially with any kind of build you're playing with. But that's why there's a little bit more of an even spread here. And also those stats were before applying any stat modifiers from whatever you might have picked out to play as, whether you're going as human, Elf, half-elf, tiefling, and half-elf is the other thing because, yeah, I had a commenter pointed out, and it is kind of almost a gold standard. I see why it's listed as a gold standard. I still think a human is going to be a solid pick, maybe not as good as the half-elf, and a tiefling is also going to be a great pick for you as well. It, and I think it competes well with the half-elf, in particular since you get dark vision with it, and a whole host of other medley of options and bonuses that just aren't as easily available everywhere else, but that's neither here nor there. Today we are going to be diving into the skills for the first edition Pathfinder Investigator, and oh goodness, you have a big array of skills. It does help that the Investigator class does get six skill ranks per level plus your intelligence modifier. So even if you haven't allocated a plus two bonus to that 16 intelligence for a total of 18 to get a plus four modifier there, you're still looking at nine skill ranks a level. If you're getting 10 with that 18, then you are going to be sitting pretty golden. Even better if you're human on top of it for 11 skill ranks every single level, you'll be able to fill out your roster pretty thoroughly and be capable of just about anything for the course of the game on top of the fact that you have different uh different abilities that you can make use of like you're uh, being an alchemy and using those abilities of an alchemist and your study opponent and your inspiration abilities on and on and on everything comes together pretty nicely to make a very very capable class all the way around but 
it is important to not spread yourself too thin. So remember that these guides are just that, they're guides. This is just one possible way of playing the class. And while, while I do like to think I am pretty good at this, I am by no means the only expert out there, no, nor am I the most expert person out there as well. So if you have somebody else suggesting ideas to you, or if you have a particular build that you want to go for that isn't necessarily meta or the most effective, most broken thing possible, then do that. Do whatever is going to be fun for you. But now that we have all that out of the way and we're just about five minutes in at this point, let's go ahead and start getting into skills. So to start things off, we have acrobatics. Working off of your dexterity, this allows you to navigate through narrow or over slippery surfaces. Definitely pretty handy to have, though maybe not always going to be the most important, most relevant skill depending on the game. And it works since it works off of your dexterity, you're already going to have a pretty solid bonus to it. So if you throw one skill rank into this, with it being a class skill, that plus three from your dex, one plus one from the rank, and then plus three for the miscellaneous modifier that you get, you're already sitting at a plus seven, which is going to see you through a lot of different uh, dicey situations that you might find yourself in. A lot of slippery situations that you need to be able to skirt through seamlessly. That's going to handle it pretty comfortably. And if you threw the occasional rank in every so often, so much the better. Next, we have Appraise. Working from your intelligence, this lets you identify the value of different items and if they're magical, what their abilities might be. This also will help you with detecting counterfeit items. And normally, I wouldn't rate Appraise so high, especially not when you have Spellcraft available as a class skill, but this fits really well for an investigator. This works very nicely and is probably going to line up with the type of campaign that you're going to make an investigator for. Not that an investigator couldn't participate in your classic dungeon crawl. They're certainly capable of doing that with the whole array of abilities and skills that they have coming together in one character class. But this is going to work really well for a lot of cloak and dagger, mystery, investigation, interaction and role play kind of games where you're examining different items and the like. So appraise definitely gets to have a bit of a bump here. Also works great with the fact that this is going off of your intelligence score, which as we've discussed is already going to be pretty solid. The next skill is Bluff. Com uh, coming off of your charisma, this allows you to lie to the target, to convey secret messages, or faint in combat. So Bluff is actually a really useful skill, but charisma, as we talked about, is a little bit of our dump stat. So if you were to take, say, a trait that let you use Bluff to at least be able to lie to your target or convey secret messages, working off of your intelligence, then bluff gets to be much, much better for you. But even if you don't do that, investing a couple of skill ranks into it here will overcome the charisma penalty pretty handily. Then, and then after bluff, we have climb. Working off of strength, which is not a bad stat for you, this lets you climb obstacles. This is going to be one point at most because most campaigns, even at normative levels of magic, doesn't even have to be high levels of magic, you are going to have means and abilities uh, to get around most obstacles you would have to climb over. Just off of your class abilities alone, you are probably going to have options to let you get around this pretty easily. And if not, well, you have used magic device. Next, we have the craft skill. Also working from intelligence, this allows you to craft objects relevant to the skill. If you're basket weaving, making fishing rods, doing any kind of woodworking or carpentry, blacksmithing, weaponsmithing, armor smithing, whatever kind of smithing you might be up to, craft is going to do it for you. However, to recommend this as a supremely relevant skill, I don't know that I can do that. It's going to depend on your character, how you put them together. If I were to guess, I would say something alchemy, alchemy related, potions related is probably what's going to be most relevant for you, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. But that would definitely be a really solid route to go. Other crafting skills, it's just gonna be a little bit of a toss up on the character that you are wanting to build crafting things in regards to reagents and alchemical con uh, concoctions and the like, definitely a big plus there. Then we have diplomacy. 
also working from your dump stat of charisma. This allows you to persuade the target, smooth things over, or gather information. Bear in mind that the trait that you could take for this to work diplomacy off of your intelligence won't apply to get the gathering information aspects, but even still, being able to persuade a target through logic or smoothing things over with your reasoning using diplomacy and your intellect is going to be very, very useful for you. This makes that trait very valuable, very worthwhile, but even again, if you don't do that, diplomacy is going to be worth it for you as an investigator in the kind of interplay that you're going to have with different NPCs, given, well, just the suite of abilities and the kind of role investigators have. Then comes Disable Device, working from Dex, another good stat. This allows you to open locks, disable, or rig a device, in particular traps and the like. So working off of Dexterity makes this very handy in and of itself. And uh, you're going to have moments where you're probably going to want to gain access to areas that people don't want you to be getting into. So being able to pick open locks, definitely useful makes this a pretty valuable skill. Then we have Disguise. Working off of Charisma, this allows you to change your appearance depending on how much your changing appearance affects the difficulty. If you're trying to disguise yourself as a different gender, uh, different species, uh, radically different in height, that will all affect the DC of this skill. So I can see several situations where this would be useful, but it's not necessarily universally useful, and you're going to have different magic items available to uh, compensate for this. So if you didn't want to invest too heavily into this, or at all, you're probably going to be okay. But if you're in a low magic campaign, then this skill is probably going to be bumped up a bit in terms of how useful it is. Then following that, we have Escape Artist. This allows you to escape bonds, ex grappling checks, etc., things like that. And given that we're not a supremely high-strength character, and we're not wearing the heaviest of armors, and we're working off of our dexterity score, which is going to be a great stat, again, regularly investing a few points into this is probably going to be useful, because... Grappling happens fairly regularly. Uh, plenty, I can imagine several different creatures and scenarios where grappling is going to be a thing, so it's probably going to be worth it to invest in this skill. Then we have Heal, working off of Wisdom, which it's not a dump stat, but it's not one of our great stats either. This is Heal Checks to advance natural healing rate, to help overcome maladies and the like, any of those things that might be relevant. For most campaigns, Eh, this is worth maybe a point or two. If it's a low magic campaign and nobody else is really investing in the healing skill, then you want this. This is going to help get you back on your feet, get your party back on their feet faster. Following on the heels of heal, we have Intimidate, also working from Charisma. This allows you to coerce or demoralize your target, among a couple of other effects, but those are the most relevant. And again, Intimidate, another incredibly useful Charisma-based skill. So if you're going to be the face of the party, but you have a poor Charisma, definitely take a look at those traits that let you use your intelligence on all of these different face skills. Now, going on from there, we get to the knowledge skills, and you have all of them. Knowledge Arcana, working from intelligence, as all the knowledge skills do. This allows you to identify magic beasts, dragons, constructs, ancient mysteries, and arcane symbols. Definitely wildly useful. Much like Knowledge Dungeoneering. This allows you to identify aberrations, oozes. This is also used for uh, navigating or any relevant checks that might be useful for caverns and spelunking in general. So again, another great skill. Knowledge Engineering is going to depend quite a bit on the specific campaign. This is used for buildings, bridges, etc., and technological objects. So why might this be relevant for you? Well, Investigators are usually investigating mysteries, whether they're murder mysteries, or thefts, heists, or whatever the case may be. Secret passages tend to be a bit of a thing, and having engineering knowledge might be useful in those situations, might be incredibly useful. But you also have perception to help with detecting those things, but knowledge engineering could be a route to go with that. But that is definitely a fairly specific scenario. But 
excuse me, again, I can see where this is probably could it probably could come up for a number of different campaigns and dungeon crawls where there are secret passages, hidden tunnels, you know, where you have to pull on the torch or move a particular stalagmite or press in on a specific brick in order to get the door to revolve open or change in some fashion. Knowledge engineering, if it's not magical in any way, will be useful for that. Then we have knowledge geography. This is astronomy, lands, terrain, climate, peoples of those lands. Could be relevant for an investigator, not necessarily always, but still, you never quite know. So check with your DM for knowledge geography and how useful that would be. Knowledge history. This is city foundings, major events, wars. It's another skill that can be incredibly relevant to an investigator, but may not always be. So again, check with your DM. Check with your DM in any of these. Knowledge local, definitely useful for an investigator. This is laws, customs, legends, humanoids, humanoid creatures, and the like. So this one is definitely one that you want to invest at least a couple of points into. Then, knowledge nature. This covers fae, animals, monstrous humanoids, vermin, plants, weather patterns. All things that, again, could be relevant to the course of an investigation that your erstwhile investigator might be assigned to. Knowledge Nobility. This also, again, intelligence. This is about knowing royalty, heraldry, personalities, bloodlines, etc. Definitely something that could that would likely be relevant to an investigator, but not necessarily across a lot of different campaigns, because you could have several campaigns without ever interacting with the nobility all that much. But again, just depends a little bit, so check with your DM. Then we have Knowledge the Planes. Definitely wildly useful knowing all the planes their magics and the outsiders relevant or native to those planes so what do i mean by relevant well i mean take the nine hells as an example a fiend the fiends that occupy there now asmodeus and all the different devils that have infested the place they weren't the original inhabitants of the nine hells but they are the dominant and now considered the de the de facto native outsiders to that realm the displaced pe uh, peoples and outsiders that used to live there they are definitely considered native but they're not the most primarily or well-known denizens of that horrific realm so Knowing knowledge of planes and the relevant outsiders to that plane can be useful, but that's just an example right there. Then we have knowledge religion, religious customs, deities, holy symbols. Again, another one that is going to be very useful. This is also useful for identifying the undead or signs of undead attack, which again could be relevant for your investigations. Then we have linguistics. Working from intelligence, this allows you to learn more languages and create or detect forgeries, uh, documents and the like. So, yeah, you, be you better bet that this is going to be uh, relevant to your character, to your class, and the uh, campaigns that you're playing in. It's definitely worth it to at least invest in a couple of different languages. That way you can keep interacting with people. Though... Just remember, depending on what you're selecting, you're going to have common as the base, and then you get bonus languages based off of your intelligence, possibly others that you get for free too, depending on what you pick. Next, we have Perception. This is the most rolled skill in the game, and it works off of Wisdom. This is why we didn't choose to tank Wisdom. This skill alone right here is important for any class that gets it. This allows you to detect hidden things, quiet sounds. This is the most rolled skill in the game. It cannot be emphasized enough to you. Then we have perform, working from charisma. This is performing with inst instruments, oratory skills, comedy, etc. I could see where maybe this could also add in for say disguise or bluffing in the or intimidation like if you're used to acting to putting on a face to conveying certain feelings or portraying yourself a certain way i could see where this could give a relevant plus two bonus to those skills if you've invested in it but that's on a dm to dm case by case basis so check with your dm to see if they like that idea i know i would but again just kind of play around with it and see what your DM says. Then we have the profession skill. This is something we don't really need to invest too heavily into. This is a skill for like 
your downtime or for the skip this is a, a gap covering skill like say if you were running um, a private investigator business this is the skill you would roll to see okay how many cases did you solve what kind of money did you make out of it these aren't big cases these are the, resolving the day-to-day -day things like finding out who the husband is cheating with, who the wife is cheating with, who's disrupting the thruple situation, whatever the case might be. The salacious gossip stories, not necessarily the hard-hitting, upending, up, great upheaval in the kingdom kind of cases that you would base an adventure around. Maybe. But anyways, not something that you would necessarily invest too heavily in, really. Then we have sense motive. Detect when someone is lying. Get a sense of if they're withholding something. This is how you get a read on people and the state that they are in. And if they're trying to hide the state that they're in or if they're lying to you. Definitely a must have for any self-respecting investigator. Even if you're not taking intimidate. Sense motive, perception, diplomacy. These skills will open huge doors for you and unearth a wealth of information. And you can see why it's important that the, that the investigator has a good intelligence score. Because even with those six skill ranks a level, you have just a whole suite, a whole host of very, very useful skills. So definitely take some time, talk with your DM, see if they're willing to give you a couple of hints on, in particular, when it comes to the knowledge skills on what is probably going to be more relevant. D any good DM is not going to know necessarily every skill that be, will be relevant on every step of the way. So don't be afraid also to build your own character because any good DM will also try to build their adventure to cater at least a little bit to what the player's strengths are. At least I try to do that, and I definitely encourage other DMs out there to do the same. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Do you like today's video? Did you dislike it? I know with skills, it's kind of hard to to kind of gauge or get really a solid feeling on any of it, unless somebody is just wildly missing the mark with skills, which, in which case, if I have missed the mark pretty wildly, then let me know in the comments down below, hit those like or dislike buttons, and remember, if you've made it this far, you must have enjoyed something, so why not go ahead and go down there and hit the subscribe button, become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time. Good gaming to you all, and you all have yourselves a good night.